Hey guys, it's Carl, and I'm just doing a quick video here on shimming a Evo or VR4 transfer case because I killed this one through not enough oil, and so I'm going to buy an expensive Brenner Corsa gear set for it. And I got quoted six to eight hundred dollars to have it <coughs> built, and I'm like, dude, that's a lot of money. So I did an investigation, and I was initially wrong about this. So it is a lot of money to uh, uh, shim these properly because there are three places they need to be potentially shimmed. They absolutely, as it turns out, need to be shimmed left to right. So if you look at this, uh, this is the left-hand side of the transfer case. That would be the gearbox under here. Uh, there is a bearing race uh, in there. So where that pops out, there's a bearing. There's also a race in here, and you can see the bearing race there. You can knock these out very easily from the back side with a screwdriver. And it turns out there are shims behind them. So these are the races from another of my spare old transfer cases. Um, and here is one of the shims that goes behind it. And here is the other one. Here. Uh, this one was 1.07 millimeters thick and this one was 0.98 millimeters thick they both have numbers stamped on them not sure if you can see the 98 on this one it's right at the top there you can really just see that 98 at 0.98 this is 1.07 so the transfer case requires that uh, this is actually looking at it vertically so I'll just move my spare one out of the way here. So this would be this would be the transfer case looking from the rear. So your pinion going that way. Here's your gearbox side. Here's your outer casing. You have to shim the diff assembly with its needle roller bearings exactly left and right in the case to line, to correctly mesh the teeth um, on the ring gear with the teeth on the pinion. So here is another of my chewed up ring gears, a pinion gear, sorry. So this pinion gear goes into there. That's a very, very tight machined fit, so I can't just slot it in there for laughs. Um, but that apparently is the pinion height, I think is the term, and left and right is the depth. I could be using the wrong terms here. But two of my transfer cases I've got lying around, one's in the car, the other two are here, don't have a shim in here, but this one does. And it is exactly, and I've measured it, 0 0.31 of a millimetre. So when this transfer case was being built at the factory, they realised that after assembling it, that the height of the... Uh, ring and pinion wasn't correct so they installed this shim and they must have a bunch of these in the factory so I imagine when you're shimming this if you don't have a bunch of these lying around they're really hard to get hold of so if you happen to just take your transfer case apart to fit a new diff inside here like a LSD don't worry it's not going to affect the shimming but as soon as you fuck with that ring and pinion gear replacing it or whatever then you need to reshim it and these parts are not easily come by so the cost for just the bearings and seals that's the races and these and all the oil seals because you will need one two three oil seals two on one side because there's an inner and an outer right because this one hot keeps in the transfer case oil and this one keeps in the gearbox oil Right for the diff for the diff housing, so you need those, and you need the bearings. Um, possibly you need the bearings for the um, that hold this on. Um, again, yes, you would if you're replacing the um, the um, pinion gear, <coughs> because that's going to get torqued down to spec. So you can see how much effort this, how much torque it requires. This is not moving freely. I'm having to give it a little bit of force. So all of these you'd have to actually have you know, the appropriate torque required to spin them as the preload on the bearing. Yeah, so that explains why it's going to cost me a pretty penny 
to get a Brenner Corsa gear set um, for this transfer case housing. Good times.